Hi everyone, welcome back to Healthy with Nicole. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about some new research about whether or not fruits and vegetables have the same effect on your gut. Well, it might be surprising to you that some vegetables could actually cause more problems than they can help your gut. Uh, but if you've been following me for a while, you know that this is already my belief since I emitted all uh, plant matter out of my diet to cure my ulcerative colitis, which worked. Um, but now there's coming out some more research and I'm gonna refer to this paper here. I'll put a link down below so you can read the article yourself. Uh, but this was a paper that came from Cambridge University Press on a conference for diet and digestive diseases. And it's really interesting because they actually are combining research that's already been done. And so this isn't necessarily new information, it's just kind of a new take on it. Um, but what they're talking about here is, is for so long we have been uh, you know, prompted to have five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And this is intended to uh, keep your colon healthy and prevent disease and early death. But what we have been looking at is something that I've been talking about for quite a while since my experience and also the experience of many of my clients that come to me for inflammatory bowel disease issues, um, which is that not all fibers are the same. So what we found here is, is that the, there are different types of plant material foods that um, can be harmful and actually cause more problems to the gut. And they refer to one study here that um, you may have heard about before. It's the Nurses Health Study. This was done in the, in the United States that had almost 90,000 women followed for 16 years. So this is called a cohort study where you take a fairly large group and you watch them over time. So this is pretty good information um, to see what happens. However, it is you know self-reporting. So we always have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, so I rather kind of go on what I see happening real time with myself and my clients. Um, but this is pretty good information. So in the nurses health study who were following these 88,000 88, women for 16 years, they found no protective effect for dietary fiber against the risk of colorectal cancer. And what's interesting about this is that not only did they not have a protective effect by eating more fiber um, through fruits and vegetables, they actually break it down a little bit further. And I apologize for looking away, I do have to read a little. Um, but the article goes on to say that even more surprisingly, it showed that people in the top quintile for vegetable fiber intake actually had an increased risk for subsequent development of colorectal cancer, as opposed to those who were consuming more cereal and fruit fiber intake were not significantly related to the increase in risk. So there does seem to be a breakdown. And what this article goes on to explain is that there's a difference between uh, pectins, which is a certain kind of fiber, and fructooligosaccharides different kind of fiber. There's multiple kinds of fiber. So pectins are those that are broken down pretty easily and they typically are coming from fruit. Um, and this is what I have found is that, you know, people with inflammatory bowel disease really cannot tolerate a lot of fibrous foods. However, they do pretty well with fruit and fruit does have fiber, but this kind of fiber called pectin. So um, this is pretty interesting, you know, what they're finding that pectins uh, rapidly ferment in the colon. So this is a good thing because it's actually helping the body to uh, feed the micro microbiome through these fermentation of pectins, right? So this is a good thing. Um, but on to the nurse's health study again, it also notes that people in the highest quintile for fruit fiber consumption in the nurse's health study had approximately 40% lower risk for future development of Crohn's disease, whereas high consumption of either cereal or vegetable fiber had no significant effect. Um, so what this is saying, just to repeat it in easier terms, with the women that were consuming fruit for their fiber had 40% less uh, development of Crohn's disease because compared to those eating uh, grains and vegetables. And so if you think about this in nature, 
um, when people like to argue the fact that, you know, maybe broccoli isn't such a good idea, when is the last time that you went out into nature and saw a broccoli crown on the ground or a cauliflower for that matter, or kale? It just doesn't happen. It's not happening in nature. These are part of agriculture. They're relatively new for our bodies and we, we just don't have the digestive process to be able to break them down. Whereas if you compared yourself to, and I know it's gonna be in certain locations, but without farming, could you possibly come across some fruit in the wild, in nature? Yes, you might find berries, um, you might find you know um, different kinds of, of fruits that haven't necessarily been part of the agriculture, but are growing in the wild. So that makes sense to me, and if I look at it in, terms of um, in practice for myself and my clients, they do much, much better on an animal-based diet with fruit consumption as opposed to vegetable consumption if they already have inflammatory bowel disease. So this just kind of confirms um, what we already know. And there, this also goes on to say that, um, that fructooligosaccharides, which are in onions, garlic, um, some of those fibers that don't break down very well used to be considered very healthy for your gut. And now what they're finding is that these actually exasperated colitis. So people that are um, already suffering from colitis, and I'm gonna say pr Crohn's probably fall into that same category, probably should not eat uh, foods that are high in those um, inulin is what we also call it. And some people take those as a supplement too, but they apparently are not that good. Um, another thing that's implicated for colitis people is that they have too high of levels of butyrate, which is basically made in the body by eating a lot of fibrous foods. Um, so we think of butter, which it, we also get it from there, but it can be from the fermentation of foods and having too much of that in the gut um, seems to be you know, making things worse. So this is a very long study, um, long paper, but it really talks a lot about you know, colorectal cancer, colitis, and basically inflammatory bowel um, in total, and also things like polysorbate 80, how they found that to be um, definitely increasing the risk for um, bacterial uh, problems and cancer of the colon. Um, lastly, I wanna mention that you guys might like, leave this on a positive note because I know how much of you love coffee. And it was interesting that they included this in this article, but that, um, Basically, five cups of coffee, now that's a lot, but five cups of coffee is associated with a reduction in risk of about 20% um, for things like type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, cirrhosis, and all cause mortality. So you can drink quite a bit of coffee, doesn't matter if it's decaf or regular, um, but that coffee consumption seems to be correlating with um, better health. So cheers to you that you like the coffee and uh, maybe this is a good time to consider what you're eating and how much vegetable matter you're eating. Maybe it's time to pull back on the vegetable matter if you're someone that's suffering from colitis or inflammatory bowel disease and start to consider what types of foods you're eating. I've had great success with that in my clients and also in my body, um, so some food for thought there. So if you like that video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.